The buttons are pressed. Yay! Yay! Woo. We're all going to die. You know, when I eventually make the bingo card for our campaigns, that is going to be one of the <laughs> options. Probably. I mean, I say it at least one at one once an episode. So. I love this game. is going to be the free space, but we're all going to die. At least has to be one of the corners. <laughs> Hello. And welcome to Critical Recovery. This is a homebrew 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons campaign. This is session two, episode two of Critical Recovery. So you're not jumping in on something that has a long backlog of episodes to listen to in order to catch up and figure out all the plot. You've got one. Well, Yay. and also all the ones from the previous two campaigns. There's that too. But no, they're only loosely tied in. <laughs> well, I'm going to bite my tongue. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> exactly. One of my favorite Doctor Who quotes. <laughs> With that said, my name is Crash. I will be your DM for the evening. Tonight I am joined by a bunch of awesome people, including Chris, Ellie, Jen, and Cindy. So, what happened last time? Uh, we, my, we were we, told to not die. and We met up with my greatest enemy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yours personally, not necessarily the characters. But yes. yeah, Chris is mortal enemy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Chris's character thinks that she's a, a lovely dragonborn woman. N- nothing. I mean, I wouldn't her. say lovely, a little arrogant, but definitely not not annoying. Within five minutes of you coming back to life, she offered you black coffee. Yes, but she was also kind of rude about the, just the whole, you know, not really telling us much. Right, right. <clears throat> and she gave us the quest of don't die, yeah. which we succeeded on so far. So far. So far, yes. It is. It's the quest that you keep doing well until you don't. We've ended right. up in the town of Oregano, and we are... we set up a base, uh, loosely use the words base, in the tavern, and we're exploring. We're exploring a monster-filled cave, because that's how we decided to not die. Yeah, yeah. Of course. You know? I, don't, I don't think any of us have, have made it clear that we're bright. <laughs> right. My... One of my favorite <laughs> quotes from last week, because I, I mentioned this before we started recording, but I was editing that episode yesterday, was Ellie's character saying, you know, we were told to not die, but that cave over there looks interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so here's an alternative to not dying. <laughs> How about we do that instead? And you ran into some wonderful friends along the way. Yeah, we'll be fine. <clears throat> including some winged elemental type creatures that didn't care for you very much because you were not Mephits. Was that a Mephits? Yes. There's a story with that somewhere on the website. <laughs> anyway. Not only is there a story for that somewhere on the website, that was one of our one-shot episodes. So it was. That's how the people story People can go back and listen be. to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. And you also made a new friend that wanted to have you for lunch. Indeed. Oh, right. Yeah. And we all found out a little bit about each other and what, we, what we're capable of. Mm-hmm. Really, the true not dying was the friends you made along the way. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and some of us who are in different bodies than expected after being reborn. Uh, yeah. So you're just a slightly trying different to figure shade out... of red. What? Sorry? You're just a slightly different shade of red. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, You're a slightly know. different shade. One's went from a elf to a Ganassi. That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> that's but still, a it's, like, it's a new body. You have to figure out what it can do. <laughs> you know? anyway. But think about all the swimming that Gorga can do now. Oh, the- you're, you're going to have to drag her into the water kicking and screaming. She's still pretty scared because drowning. Yeah. I've, I've got some bad news for you for about parts of this map. Speaking of character race, character species, I'm trying to pad out so Eo can get here. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I opened Scrivener today, and it was up, it was open to the my my Cogwheel Gaming doc, uh, project. That's what they call them. And the the document that I had last opened was it was a blank document just called "So You're a Human." I have no idea what I was going to write in that, hmm. <laughs> but it's. I mean, I feel like that's... I feel like there is an article there. I just don't know what it was going to be. <laughs> oh. It's made even better by the fact that this party has no humans. Yeah, exactly. True. Yeah, the closest we've no got is we've got a half-elf. I was going to say, I would be the closest as a half-elf, yeah. 
Well, also, tieflings are mostly human. There's yeah. a there's a fell influence there, but they're mostly human. Right. Uh, fiend influence. Genasi are mostly human, but there's an elemental influence. Mm-hmm. So, and, and Asimar are mostly human, but there is an angelic so influence. Divine. So, yeah, divine it, influence. Yeah, so... if you combine all of you, you might have two and a half humans. <laughs> <laughs> But also that'd be a lot of arms and legs and heads just stuck onto the same body. And let's not go there. Let's not do that. Yeah. yeah. That, that was a previous not... big bet. <laughs> I am happy to just be my half drow self and just be over here and stay away from that nightmare. <laughs> yeah, your body was recoverable. Hmm? I was going to say, let's, let's never have the party meet Seelin. Oh. Seelin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, recurring necromancer character from... Theo's backstory in the previous Yes, season. yes, 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 yes. Remember, I remember now. Sorry. And I continue to be so, so happy that EO created that character for <laughs> me to use as an NPC. It's like m- most NPCs that are deeply ingrained into backstories, I always worry a little bit when I'm playing them that I'm not going to hit the right tone that the player envisioned for that character in their character's backstory. But Seelin, I just fell into it. Seelin's fun. I, I imagine. Well, he's a total narcissist. Oh, completely, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not... I don't want to ever be a narcissist, but it's fun to play one on TV. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and by TV, I mean Twitch.tv. Right, right, yeah. It's always, like, I've always thought, like, as far as play one on TV, I've always thought that playing, like, the big bad or the bad guy, so to speak, would be more fun than playing, like, the regular characters, you know? Because you can just, like, there's so much range to playing the villain, you know? Hello. Hi, a I'm here. Hello. Um, a Hello. A friend was live blogging things and direct messages, so that so I set myself to do not disturb while I was writing the climactic scene of a whole arc of a fanfic, and then it was late. That's okay. That's okay. I was almost late because I was listening to the old episodes from the Circulus campaign. Yes, that's I almost valid. Had a message and forgot about the. I forgot about tonight. <laughs> yeah, so it's all right. Chris yeah. was playing World of Warcraft. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was the tank. Fire went over time. I was the tank and had to abandon. <laughs> oh. Mm. I'm sure it'll be. You were okay with it. And LFA is here too. Woohoo! Yay! All right, so we finished the recap, and then we started stalling for time and digressing and I was going to go into a wonderfully <laughs> long soapbox about villains and evil campaigns and the dynamics of having evil characters and stuff like that. Although, to be fair, I don't like using evil characters. And I'm not talking about PCs. That too. But you have faced, and by you I mean the players, not the characters, mm-hmm. in all my campaigns... You have faced one villain that was mustache twirling evil. Yep. The rest is all just about respect. Everyone else was an adversary who was the protagonist of their story. All of their ends were justified. All all their means were justified by the ends that they were achieving. And if a few eggs had to be broken, well, at least they had an omelet to play with. Although Fred was really fun to play too. Fred, yeah. (laughs) Fred was fascinating. (laughs) He'd read too many works of fiction from this world mm-hmm. and thought, I'll make a tower and trick the ranger into putting his prized bow on a pedestal that is a mimic. It was actually three mimics. In a trench coat. <laughs> there was no trench coat. There was but no it was, trench coat. But it was, it was statted up to be three mimics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with all that said, uh, we finished our recap for the most part. You ended the last session in room three, if I remember correctly. Which, let's see if I can take a screenshot and capture this in all its glory. Crash, why weren't you doing that while you were stalling? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So you were in room three. There are what look like two passageways that head towards the north, but they also very clearly, after a few feet, just sort of collapse into cave ins. So there's no way to go north from here, but there are two ways to go south. The way you came, you can see. That's on Isn't the western that great? area. Isn't that a great description of D&D campaigns? No way to go north from here, but there are two ways to go south. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 
great metaphor, you know? <laughs> so, um, first of all, inspiration. <laughs> I'm going to totally take credit for that insight because it came out of my mouth. But thank you for letting me know that I should take credit to that insight. I am not currently <laughs> playing Seelin. Or am I? <laughs> yes, the entire time it was Seelin behind the Dungeon Master screen. Ha ha! Not now, I'm monologuing. <laughs> Which, by the way, is my favorite Seelin line I've ever come up with. I believe he, he gave that line while he was inside an impenetrable bubble. I think so. Yeah, I so, don't remember because I wasn't there at the time. I was... At a convention, I believe. I think so, but Ari and then passed. I showed up in the in the nick of time. After I, yeah, during uh, the intermission, I think it it wasn't Ari. It was it was um it was Matt's character. It, I keep thinking Ari because I was listening to the old episodes, but never mind. But mm-hmm. Matt's character cast the spell on Celin to have him be in an impenetrable bowl, while various zombies and orcs were trying to kill him. And he just kept on talking. Now, he was on his third or fourth undead body because he kept possessing various zombies that the orcs had brought with them. So one zombie would step forward and say, Hello, I bet you wonder why this zombie is now speaking to you with such wonderful diction. And they'd shoot it full of arrows. And then an over zombie would step forward and say, That was very rude. (laughs) We have about an hour left. (laughs) True, true. Okay. So, uh, with all that said, all the digressions aside, you heard squeaking, and Vex took off. Vex as in the pseudo-dragon, familiar, of Fava, not mm-hmm. Vex as in a half-elf ranger with right. an adorable puppy. <laughs> so we're just letting the, the Vex who dragon is die, is an right? adorable puppy, just a dragon puppy. <laughs> I don't think we can let the dragon die. There are tokens. Yeah, let... I think we I mean, should... I it's familiar. It'll just pop back to whatever realm it came from. Eh, still seems wrong to me. Talia, give me a history or arcana check, whichever is higher. Uh, 15. Okay, so you are aware that while many pseudo-dragon familiars are, in mm-hmm. fact, the regular kind of familiar where it's a face spirit and they get killed and you just hang around for an hour and you've got them again... Pseudo dragons are one of those species that sometimes just pick a spellcaster to hang out with them. Oh god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know which one Vex is. Okay, so the little dragon is chasing something. Let's hope it is something this time. Yeah, let's follow. I wanna roll something just as what would just to try and think what she would do as like a morality check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing morality checks. That's totally up to you. You're the one. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just trying to think what would what, morality what, rules what are an entirely role. different system. So what okay. you just what you just put okay. in chat is to the lower right of that is correct. And for this particular room, uh, this is a relatively small chamber. Uh, it doesn't have any note except for there is a pickaxe embedded uh, by the business end into a nearby salt deposit. There's a few other bits of mining detritus lying around, but that pickaxe sort of stands out because it's just sticking out of the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also there is a very agitated pseudo-dragon that is sort of flapping around right above what appears to be a rodent of unusual size. Hmm. Well, okay, that that's one was big. not small. Um, so what is unusual size in this um, context? Is it just like cat-sized rat, or is it like um, a sized rat? It's small, but it's not tiny. So, So kobold-sized rat. Yes. Unless the kobold in question is a particular bard. I was looking for a way to mention that, but we've digressed enough as it is, so yes. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Uh (laughs) No, don't be, because it's where I was going to go. I suppose I should probably have you roll for initiative. So... Remember, Ryan, don't forget you have advantage. Ah, thank you. 16. 10. Uh, 13. We have a tie for 13. Mm-hmm. Okay. The rats go first. Plural? Plural, yes. Because apparently this one was the leader of the vanguard. And others oh, start pouring in from the southwest. Okay. Many, many rats. Not good. Not good. Okay, so I'm going to roll a lot of dice. <laughs> Loving D&D Beyond. 
better many, many rats than many, many, uh, well, bandits or something. Of course, there aren't many, many of uh, us right now, so maybe it evens out. Okay, so two of them are going after Talia. Talia, what's your AC? 12. Yep, they both hit. That's a 16 and a 17. Okay. Uh, do you want to split the damage separately for the two of them, purely because I have Armor of Agathus up? <laughs> okay. Well, they each are doing four points damage. It is piercing damage. Okay, then each each of them will take five cold damage. Okay. Uh, neither of them likes that. <laughs> I also need you to make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. Uh, that's, that's a nat 20. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to have it be one roll for both of them because I can't be bothered. Okay. And I'm putting in the damage for those two. And Ryan, what's your AC? 19. Oh, those are misses. And Gorgo, what's your AC? 15. One of those hits. You take four points of damage. That is about half half my health pool right now. And Even with armor of Agathus, I'm, I'm, I'm a half health. <laughs> and go ahead and make a constitution saving throw, Gorgo. Nat 20. Okay. Nice. And last but not least, Morley. Armor class What's your 14. AC? 14. 14. Those both miss. Oh. Gorga's next. Good. There's a bunch of them, but they're not very good. I'm going to pull on my rapier and try stabbing one of the ones that just attacked me. Okie dokie. 25. A glancing blow. Roll your damage. Uh, do I get to add my sneak attack to this? You know what? For this, I'll allow it. All right. Technically, I should only allow it if you're attacking one of the ones that's attacking somebody else. So, with the generous sneak attack, I get to do 11 damage to one of the rats. How do you want to do this? Whoa. I mean, it's it's a rat, and you have a right here. There's stabby stab. <laughs> it's a rat kebab. Yep. The body is still on your rapier when you go and pull it away. It is the worst marshmallow. <laughs> okay, next up is Ryan. Right. Okay, then. Um, are we all sort of clustered up, or...? It is a giant cluster, yes. <laughs> Shut up, Chris. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, so... So far, Talia and Gorga have taken damage? Yes. I'll be fine. I've... All right, we... then. I'm going to... Take my long sword, and I'm going to swing at one of the rats that attacked Gorga. Well, there's only one Gorga attacking rat that remains. Great. Um, let me remind myself what my to hit modifier is. Well, that's well, with a, a 21. 21. Oh my! Roll your damage, because if I'm throwing something with an armor class over 20 at you, something's gone horribly wrong at level one. Nine, Nine points. Slashing. How do you want to do this? Put my long sword right through its body. Okay, so Thunk. we have one, we have one rat kebab, and one rat dissection. Uh, uh, right. And, and Zeli showed up briefly. <laughs> Morley. Okay, I'm going to try and hit one with a crossbow. Shoot it. Okay, roll to hit. And okay, roll to hit. It's ten plus five for fifteen. That's gonna hit. Roll your damage. Okay. Uh, seven plus three for ten. Okay, it had seven hit points. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> how do you okay. want to do this? I'm going to shoot it through its little head. Its poor little head. <laughs> okay, it is now impaled on the floor. Okay. Zuda. I, I am done. Zuda, you're up. Yes, um, so where are the rats? All about. Well, okay. many My of them head. are bleeding out at this point, but they're still all about. Um... The two that were attacking Gorga are down, right? Yes. All right. Talia's still got two on her. Talia will yes. be fine. Yes, although those two look very badly burned. Okay. Ooh, freezer burn. Yep. That's why I love Armor of Agathus. <laughs> so good. Uh, with Talia saying that she's going to be fine, I will trust her and cast Toll the Dead on one of the rats attacking her. That one clip where... And I, I'm going to decide to trust her. We freeze frame. And the narrator says, and that's where everything went south. <laughs> <laughs> there were two ways to go south. This is when they decided which of those ways they were going to go. <laughs> anyway, it's a wisdom saving throw at, at 13. Would you accept a seven? 
I'm afraid not. Okay. Uh, Roll your d12. You have a 1 in 12 chance of not killing it. Ah, well, it's 4 damage, so... Poof. Or rather, I should say, how do you want to do this? Um... That was nice fully work. (laughs) Uh, The bell rings in the air and the rat falls over, I guess. I mean, it's psychic damage, so... Okay. The rat's hair explodes. Oh, necrotic... uh, Sorry, necrotic damage, so it just starts rotting. Okay, so we now have... We have a rat kebab, another rat kebab, but on a crossbow bolt, a bisected rat. And a desiccated rat. Yes. Talia. Uh, it's almost dead, so I'm just going to uh, summon my rapier and cut its head off. Okay, go ahead and roll. Uh, that is a 12. That is exactly what you needed. Yay. Do you have a bonus to your damage? Uh, bonus is four. Uh, three, sorry. How do you want to so, do this? Just head off. Any bonus would have been lethal damage without rolling, so. Yeah, I, I figured the armor of Agathus would have done enough. <laughs> yeah, that did most of it. Yeah. Okay. And Vex swoops in. For some reason, you faintly hear in the background. Dun, da, 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 da. That's not true. Or is it? No, it's not. One moment, because the DM forgot to load up Vex's character sheet. The best part is a pseudo dragon counts as tiny, so Vex is smaller than these rats. And yet, okay, it swoops in and uses its stinger. That does four points of piercing damage. The rat needs to make a constitution saving throw. And that's a two, so that doesn't work out well. So we have a rat that is wounded and unconscious. So uh, just in case you want to keep one to interrogate later. <laughs> I think you might have one. Okay. Next up is a dead rat, followed by a dead rat, <laughs> followed by a live rat, two live rats, two live rats, two live rats. See how they regret life choices? Rattly, I'd expect. They actually attempt to flee. All right. Good on them. <laughs> yeah, see how they run, Archbeth. Exactly. Uh, would anyone care to make an attack of opportunity? No. Nah. No. If one's in range, I will. If one's okay. in range, Charlie, I will as well. Okay. Uh, and that's a natural 20. <laughs> oh. And okay. I got a 15. That's a 9. So Talia gets to just say how she wants to do this because her bonus plus double the die. Yeah. <laughs> but I would like to see Gorgo roll damage just in case it doesn't die outright. 7 damage? That's exactly what was needed. And I think... Um, Zuda was attacking also, but it doesn't really matter at this point because the only one left alive is currently unconscious and... Oh, no, no, Vex went in for the kill. It's dead. Also, nice point, nice nice note that the D&D Beyond, when you actually roll a natural 20 on an attack, it automatically doubles your dice. Oh, they fixed that now! Oh, cool. They just added that. I didn't know that. That's nice. I haven't rolled that well yet. Yeah. So <laughs> go D&D Beyond. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll probably have a whole bunch of other features that are really nice, considering Mm -hmm. this episode will go live in October, I want to (laughs) say. None of these look particularly appetizing, especially not of that one that got um, wrong. No, I don't think I would. No, not at all. But I am going to go get my crossbow bolt back. It's a little sticky. I'll just uh, take the goo off somewhere away from my friends and put it back in the back. Okay, the rats are gone. I'm going to take a look at this pickaxe. Okay. I will say I was doing surprisingly well at the not dying thing. So far, yes. Gorga, how many hit points do you have left? How are you? Uh, five. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... Uh... Oh, that rat really hurt, but I, I'm still alive. I think maybe we should... Uh... Wait here a little bit. Catch your breath and such. Are you suggesting you rest for a short while? Yes, yes I am. (laughs) Give us time to bandage the wounds, try and clean them out a bit. There's plenty of salt if you want to rub that in. I don't think that'd help. Okay. Uh, Zuda, while everyone's taking their short rest, I will allow you to also take a look at that pickaxe. So go ahead and give me, I would say, an investigation check. Okay. Uh, 14. Okay. This pickaxe does show some signs of corrosion. It has probably been stuck in this wall for 
years, if not over a decade. Okay. With my mighty plus zero strength, can I pull it out? Go ahead and make a strength check. You, you can certainly make the attempt. Just make a strength check. I can help if you want. That's uh, another 14. Uh, you pull it out, and a large amount of salt pours down off the wall as well. Not large as in, oh no, get out of here, we're all going to be buried alive, but uh, more like you opened a cabinet and all the dishes fell out. Gotcha. Well, if we do end up having to cook some rats, at least they'll be uh, salty rats. You can make rats. I'm, I'm in no hurry. I still got a few weeks worth of rations. As opposed to ratchins. <laughs> Thank you, I'm here all week. So, has everyone who needed to regain some hit points from a short rest done what they needed to do for that? Oh, I'll we'll do that, sure. I mean, you could also keep the hit points you have. That's okay, too. You do you. No, no, I'll do a short rest. I'm doing it. I'm mm-hmm. doing it. I'm I do enough buttons. railroading as a DM already. I want you to be able to choose to live your life <laughs> on your terms with whatever low number of hit points you want to have. Uh-huh. I should uh, note the the um, sidebar thing on uh, Twitch is not showing people's accurate hit points. It's showing it them at full no matter what. Update. Oh no, it's just updated for me. So five and five for me and Gorgo, but it's, it, it takes it takes its time. Okay, I'm so I guess glad... it just wasn't working for me. I'm just glad it's showing the right party because I keep screwing that up. <laughs> Fair <laughs> so enough. We have the right party in there. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, a cobalt artificer appears. <laughs> oh no! Hi! Hello. <laughs> and Jr. waves. Well, I've got I've got my spell slot back as well. So yay! Okay, because warlocks are like run out of spells. How, who does that? All right. Well, this room goes back to room six, which you've already been in. You've already described that room. So, new point of view. The part of room sixteen, which is the room you were in with the rats. That is cropped off is a dead end anyway. It's just wall right there. That's where the pickaxe was. When you pull the pickaxe out, you smoothed it off into that straight line. That's my story, <laughs> and I'm sticking to it until I don't stick to it anymore. Okay. Uh, so you could backtrack and take the other path that you did not take before uh, back near the start of this tunnel, or you could continue south. Or you could go all the way back to the inn and say, forget this. Our goal is to not die. Why are we here? Going south from here is how we get to the Mephits, right? Uh, no, the Mephits were in room six. Oh, they're okay. all—they are still kind of there. Why are we doing the keep to the right hand thing before? You were—you kind of ignored that for the rats, but at the same time, you also still did because if you had kept to the. Actually, no, no, you would have had to go to the left for that. Uh, but you went after Vex. Vex had not paid attention to the keep to the right policy. You have a sense that Vex knew about it. Vex knew that's the policy you wanted to do, and Vex decided to do what Vex wanted anyway. So Vex is basically a cat. Vex <laughs> hops back up on your shoulders and looks very smug. Eh, uh, hard to stay mad at it. It's a cute thing. It purrs. As long as it does not get us killed, fine. I'm not sure it's wise to go where the rats must have come from. Maybe yeah, probably more rats there. They came from room but... six, where the methods are. Oh. Hmm. Guess not more rats there. They're rats. They're famous for getting everywhere. True. Not as bad as cockroaches, but close. Ugh, I hope we don't run into those. Considering the rats, they'd probably be three feet tall and out for blood. Do not like this picture you have painted here. Yeah, I've never been much of an artist. Mm. One moment, adjusting my random then? encounter table. Uh, I couldn't hear that. But... Should we continue south then? Okay. Well, Either way, I guess. Far. Let it be known that I did give you the option of heading back to town. Yep. This is not a case of the DM railroading the party. Despite the presence of a literal railroad. <laughs> Accurate. Okay, so this is room nine, which is very much like room six if you turn it upside down. <laughs> I don't deserve well, that, simple, but thank you. Uh, this room seems so. to have... Sorry. Uh, this room seems to have been the site of more than one cave-in, with evidence that some rubble was moved aside at some point, and then half-buried again by additional debris. There also mm. appears to be a very old-looking, half-covered backpack. Guess we should take a look at that. Why was this left here, though? I mean, we found nothing useful so far. 
Maybe the cavern made someone run, leaving it behind. Perhaps. I will let someone with more nimble fingers. Uh, in the back. Gorga? Uh, okay. Just be careful with that. You don't know what's inside. You just need a bag of sand that's the same weight as the backpack. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'll approach it very carefully and see if I can figure out what's inside without killing myself in the process. Okay, make a sleight of hand check. Thirteen. Okay, well, you don't do an excellent job of picking the backpack up without spilling the debris that was on top of it all over the place and the significant amount of noise made in the process, but you don't trigger any traps. There weren't any traps. It, it's an empty backpack. Hmm. There might have been things in it. There probably were things in it. It does look very well worn, and not just from laying out here for who knows how long, but also it looks like it was used heavily before it was abandoned. But at this point, if there was anything in it, perhaps a different ragtag band of adventurers took those items out. Okay, so yeah, this is just an ordinary pack. You do find inside one Easter egg. (laughs) (laughs) That's not true. In the end, the backpack was the Easter egg the entire time. Kind of actually was. Shall we continue, then? Okay, you can go to the northeast or the southeast if you're going to continue. Let's go north. Sure. Okay. If you say so. Taking advice from Chris from before, I have been rolling on the random encounter table for you, and I've either been rolling much better or much worse than you Depending did Depending on week. perspective. Depending on perspective. From my perspective, a lot worse. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't believe I did that. But because finally, I... so many things on the initiative table. Well, honestly, I put more things on the initiative table than a D12 allows you to get because I cycle through them. And I also have options for nothing to happen, which is what I got when you were in room nine. But that's not what I got for room 14. All right, then. Okay. So uh, this room has uneven ground. Like there's the level that you're coming in on and then roughly halfway through it cuts off and the ground continues a foot lower. There is Hmm. also a strange looking thing, a weird statue perhaps that is, it's not a stone statue. You don't need to worry about looking for a Medusa or Basilisk yet. That's that's later. Uh, But it looks very boxy. It's got very spindly limbs. It has rather realistically carved lips compared to the boxy nature of the body. The head is one box, the body Mm. is another box. And it is covered in salt. Okay, has anyone seen something like this before? What would I have to roll to determine whether I had? I don't go to many museums, but... uh... I'm not sure this would make it into one. That is some weird art. I'm not going to dictate a role to make. What role do you think you should make? Like you, you pick the check that you want to do, and I will tell you the result based on the role you make for it. I'm... It's got no reason to be down here, so uh, the way it's probably the way it's some positioned. kind of weird magic. The way it's positioned, it looks like it was partway through the process of climbing up this short ledge. Weird magic. Is it made of salt? Because it kind of looks as though someone created this thing from salt. What's your passive perception? Hmm? What's your passive perception? Me? And go ahead and roll your your arcana, Zuda. Morley, what's your passive perception? Uh, Passive perception is 10. Okay. While it's covered in salt, you can see metal poking through it appears to be either copper or brass more likely brass because it it's doesn't it's not green like you would expect corroded copper to be and that's an 11 on arcana yeah you're not quite sure what this thing is oh wait there is little glints of metal coming to pieces maybe they use the metal for like a scaffolding thing yeah Perhaps. but why would they leave a statue randomly in a cave. I have no idea. Yeah. That's why I don't like this. I'm gonna... Well, the way this thing's out. positioned, it looks like it was moving on its own. Like it was climbing itself out. Hmm. So, what can we do for this thing? If it was Probably. climbing, it must have had some, maybe, life? 
It says, oil me. No, it doesn't. This is, <laughs> this is not Wizard of Oz. Oh, my goodness. Well, maybe I can take one of my hand axes and try and scrape the salt off. Okay. I won't even require a roll for that. You are very easily able to scrape the salt off. You don't even need an axe for it. You can just brush it off with your hand. Although, uh, it's not solidified. Okay. It does look like there's significant salt in the joints as well. But the salt that is caked onto the outer surface, you can just wipe it off. If it was still moist, if it was still wet, that might be more of an issue. But this room appears to have been dry for a while. Wow. And you're definitely revealing a lot more brass. It's possible this entire, this thing's entire chassis and limbs were made out of brass. Cannot believe I'm doing this. Cleaning off suspicious, ultra intricate statues, lipped statues in the middle of a cave. (sighs) And for the record, because we got distracted, but Zuda, the role you made for Arcana, you don't get any clarity for it. Uh, It could be a construct, but you don't recall hearing anything about a construct like this. Okay. I have a water skin. Can I use shape water to take some of that water and clean out the joints? Sure. Um, Now I'm going with what we've been doing in the Kobold campaign with an artificer. We've been primarily relying on um, an investigation check for mechanical things. So give me an investigation check. Okay. Uh, Seven. Well, you got it wet. Yeah. I wondered if that might be the case. Ryan. Yeah. You have a guide, don't you? Yes, I do. How often does your guide talk to you? Well, the um, rules thing for Asimar say that celestial guides traditionally only talk to you in dreams. But who knows if that's accurate and circulous i leave that up to you okay worth noting thank you and now the dm is going to bite their tongue this thing looks like it's been here a while I'm not sure it's worth bothering i mean not to be cruel but if it died it seems like it died years ago if only there was some easy way for removing any kind of contaminant magically meepo would be all over this oh yeah totally. <clears throat> um can i press the digitation at you most certainly can. It falls to the ground. Huh. What did you do to it? A little bit of cleaning, darling. Okay. Thank, thank, yes. thank, 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 oh. 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 thank you. You're alive, huh? That, that All was right, then. quite unpleasant. Hello oh. there, um, oh. I'm Ryan. That was unexpected. It climbs to its feet and waves at all of you and says, Hello, I am Eight six seven five three oh nine. Oh no! <laughs> well, hello. I I I have been called Jen E on occasion. And do you like that better or the numbers? I I I have been told brevity is preferred by non modrons, so Jen E is fine. Right. Nice to meet you, Jen E. Um, uh, what? Not to be rude, but what exactly? Is a Modron. I am a Modron. Uh, that's informative. Isn't it, though? Would you care to hear my life story? I promise brevity. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, if it is very short, maybe we will learn something of you. Okay, here we go. And Jenny opens their mouth, and you hear two and a half seconds of static. I, uh, hate to say it, but I don't think I speak that language. It is common. Yes, but I feel you went at like maybe three, four hundred times normal speed. I was told that my life story was too long to give in traditional bardic pentameter, so I kept doubling the speed until people were happy with the current length. I regret press the digitation. I know. <laughs> they seem don't regret Uh, Right. So, uh... You appear to have injured among your ranks. Would anyone care to be healed? Uh, we do. Thought we, um... We should be healed. You healed up all the way from your short rest? I've got, like, one hit point short. (laughs) 
Okay, well then, Jenny still notices that you're not at full, but still. Again, I, 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 I thank you for freeing me. I got wet in the brine and it got in my joints. I was there for 10 years. That is a long time to be stuck. Yeah. That's true. No, retcon that five years. I got my timetable wrong. They've been there for five years. Still, that is a long time to be stuck. That's all. Yeah. Sounds horrible. It, 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 It was particularly unpleasant after the third year when I ran out of stories to tell myself. Oh, wow. Okay. Do you, uh, so... do you want to come with us? I, I, I am looking for inspiration for more songs to create. I am a bard. Okay. Well, so we don't know much bard about yet. how uh, barding works, but if we I can, can teach you, help you with... I have encountered a great number of bardic masters. I totally know Daldane. <laughs> Who is this Daldane? A great I'm going to roll bard. history. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is right. a four. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know Daldane. <laughs> no, no idea how, who that is. And, uh, Never mind the fact that Daldane's gone on a world tour canonically at this point. <laughs> It doesn't mean all of us would have that been aware of it. True. Seen her. True. I, uh, and who knows how long you've been I dead. I don't know. Right. Don't know much about music. Um, that was a history check. You don't know much about history. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I definitely week. don't know much about music history. I have been lear- 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 learning myself. There is not much music on Mechanus. Oh, uh, what's Mechanus? It is where all Modrons are from. So, um, are you talking city or, um, something It is the plane of logic. Ah, one of the planes. Like the abyss, only pleasant, no chaos. Interesting. Interesting. It is why I was exiled. Oh, well, um... Speech, 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 speech impediments are considered somewhat chaotic. I was going to be recycled. Right. That's harsh. Wow. That seems, um... Well, you'd Extreme. think there'd be a bit more um, justice in the ordery place. To be fair, oh. I was defective. Still, still, still am. If you destroy a Modron, a new one takes its place. Yeah, somehow that doesn't really make it better. <laughs> so what, 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 what are you doing in Oregano? Trying, trying, not, trying to not to die. Mostly, yeah. Also, you we're trying to ha- figure out what's going on. You seem to have succeeded so far, unless there are bodies that I am not aware of. There are bodies, but not from us, not our group. Though I can't say we've um, exactly succeeded in the not dying so far, just um, succeeded in it since that became our new mission. (laughs) Something like this, yes. This is true. You, you, you are very confusing. I am intrigued. Interesting. So where to now? Uh, don't know. Uh, maybe... Shall we take the south path there? Sure. Okay. And I think you all still have dark vision. Or, mm-hmm. no, how long does dark vision last? Ten minutes. Okay, so yeah, that wore right. off during your short rest. Right. I have dark vision anyway. I have dark vision. Not everyone uh, does that. I, so. I know. I know Gorka doesn't. Know. I'm gonna cast light on my sword again. Okay. Okay, so... As you go to the south, you go to room 18, uh, which also has a noticeable ledge going through it. Apparently there was a water line here at some point, and Gen E, if I can spare you from the voice for a bit, uh, points out that this area was in fact covered in water at the time that they were exploring. Hmm. And if you look at the ledge, if you climb down it, you can see that it was severely undercut by flowing water, just digging into the salt. And looking over towards room 7, which is the large room over to the east, uh, this fairly large chamber bears noticeable signs of erosion and resembles a dry riverbed. Uh, There is still a level of dampness to the north, but you you can physically see that the ground is a slightly different color, so you assume that there's more moisture over there. Like looking at sidewalk after it's rained. Uh, but most of the chamber is dry. There are significant signs of cave-in damage here and multiple charred 
marks show signs that it may have been due to some kind of explosion. Hmm. Jenny, do you have any idea what happened over here? This, 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 this is where the Kraken woke up. Mm. Interesting. But there's not And now. mine and explosives were being used. This, 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 this is also true. At, at, at the time that I was last here, this was still underwater. The hmm. crater was not visible. The, the Kraken was sleeping further to the south, below a waterfall. I wonder if it's all there. I, I, I hope not. Let's not go closer to where the Kraken may be. You know, we are trying not to die, remember? Yes, but our larger mission's also supposed to be making sure the Kraken can't come back. And I have no intention of making the being that returned me to life angry. That's a good point. But we are not ready to fight the Kraken. Well, I'm pretty if conf- there was a likelihood it was up here, we probably would have been warned. Ain't useful if we're dead. So I am. I think we can take a cautious look. I'm pretty confident the Krakens are dead. I was there, and she said when we were, in, you know, before we came back, they said we won at that battle. So I'm pretty sure they're dead. Yeah, well, that's not necessarily dead, dead, but I doubt it's here, so. I mean, we were dead, and we ain't dead, dead. Right. It's a bit confusing you think about it too hard. There there has been some debate as to whether or not I was alive. Well, what do you think? You seem pretty alive to me. I think. Therefore, I am. Good enough. Good philosophy. Okay, now you can also see parts of room 8, which is significantly different from the last time I got to use this map. Uh, This large chamber is moderately lit by a significant hole in the ceiling as a dog above you barks at your presence. Uh, Not true. There is no dog, only Zul. Oh, dear. (laughs) Uh, Where was I? Uh, This large chamber is moderately lit by a significant hole in the ceiling to the southeast that extends down into the seawater-filled lagoon that you encountered before entering the town of Oregano. Uh, the dry ground here shows significant wear from moving water, and the edge near the hole is clearly crumbling and unstable. This is, is, is where the waterfall was. And there is no more water, so maybe no kraken. Doesn't it need water? It is pa 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 possible that there is only a waterfall here when it has been raining for several days, as it had been when I was exploring. Um, question? I missed how tall it was. Jenny? No, the waterfall that is no longer a waterfall. It is... You're measuring the distance in hundreds of feet. Ah, probably ain't climbing up or down that. It is the same lagoon area that you saw Thava take a dive into. This is just a different area. Guess uh, we leave her to that. <sighs> this is also the location where the original party was one strength check away from finding the Kraken early. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was totally ready for that consequence, too. I don't think we had any idea at the time. No, you didn't. That was the <laughs> Not glorious at all. thing. Yeah. That was the glorious thing. Not but when I made the original map, I said, okay, and I'm going to put the Kraken right below this waterfall. And there's a current mm-hmm. going that way. And if they decide, hey, what if we check under the waterfall? There's always something under a waterfall. I had something for you to see under the waterfall. Right, right. You would just and regret seeing it. we're very close it. to having that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so if you choose to not head back the way you came or practice your high dive... Uh, None of you is currently able to polymorph yourself into a goldfish, so practicing your high dive is not the best choice. Yeah, I'm wearing chainmail. I think I'll pass. I just need to check off the critical role reference. On the bingo card. Yes. I also mentioned that this particular water is kind of on the toxic side. Well, brine. It is a very thick brine. Uh, So the only Kind of toxic in the same way that... uh, Trying to um, pour silt down your throat is toxic. Pretty much, yes. Only worse because silt doesn't end up pulling all the water out of you through osmosis. 
So you've got two choices available to you if you're not backtracking or high diving. One of them is you head north-ish through room seven, or the other way is you head west-ish through room eight. I thought eight had the waterfall. Eight has the waterfall to the south. Well, what used to be a waterfall. Right now it's just a cliff that you don't want to get too close to because it's crumbling. Okay, so not that way. (laughs) Um... But you can go west. West does not appear to be crumbling. Okay, maybe that way. All right, let's do that. Okay. And the huge welcome party of NPCs that had blue items to give you and a big banner of welcome adventurers, congratulations on not dying. They were all to the north, but you missed out on that. They had cake. (laughs) They had cake. (laughs) But no, you decided to go west. That's okay. So the passageway that at first goes west starts angling its way south. And there is another ledge area, but this time there is, in fact, water. Water that looks like it's been sitting there for quite some time. But don't worry, there's not a lot of algae because it is a salty brine. And you've never seen a Modron before. You've certainly never seen a Modron get terrified before. You are now encountering both of these experiences. Hey, hey, hey. It's okay. We ain't going to make you walk in that. It's going to be all right. It, 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 it was nice to adventure with you, if briefly. I, hey, hey, we don't, we don't have to go that way. Yes, yes I would also like to take a different through. route. All right, you don't the water. Okay, so we could just turn around and go the other way. Indeed. No one's saying... Hey, your mission is to go wading through a bunch of brine and find out what's on the other side. But we could have Ryan go through the brine. (laughs) And then I I would have wet boots, which, while not a terrible fate, if my mission isn't to have wet boots, I don't think I want wet boots right now. It's okay. Talia knows prestidigitation. (laughs) Actually, so does Gen E. It just didn't work out so well for them briefly. Okay. Or if there's a hole under it to suck you under brine. I hate that. (laughs) So assuming because two of the player characters have decided they're not going to adventure through the brine, that you're going to go north through room seven. Yep. I have provided a screen capture of that. The opening to the west that you see heads into room 14, which you've already seen before. The opening that goes to the east is actually, you could try to crawl through it, but you would be getting down on your stomach to do so. And it looks like this was the source of the water at some point. I don't think we need to crawl through things here. It's not a good plan. Also, the ground here is significantly damp. It's more like walking through wet sand than the rest of the passage has been. Perhaps not that fair. Okay, you can continue to the north, or you can backtrack and go a different way. Is the north how we got in here? Uh, no, you got in here t- from the south of room 7. Uh, okay, maybe north, unless someone else has a better plan than me. I don't know where I'm going. Sure, let's take a look at north. Okay, this is weird because now room 15 is in Discord below room 7. <laughs> but it's right. the other way around. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so 15... The ground here is damp. You can see there's a room to the north. There's also a room to the west. Is there anything in this room of interest? Do you like wet salt? No. I am quite tired of wet everything at this point. There's too much water and moisture in the cave. To be fair, you weren't really encountering wet anything until you got to room seven. Still, it's too much. Uh, Let's continue on. Unless you guys just want to head back to the inn. I guess it depends on if we are done... Uh, trying not to die in the cave. Let's continue on. See what we can. I wouldn't mind keeping on looking if you're doing all right. Okay. okay. So north or west? North, I think. Uh, which way is taking us closer to where we started? If either. South. You'd have to backtrack. Uh, all right, north. This is a fun room. One. It's the loneliest number that there's ever been. <laughs> this room has the rubble of a long-ago cave-in on one end and two small passages, uh, which one of them you came through. Uh, Most of the room is covered with a sludge that would be called brine if it contained more water. 
there are some stalactites and stalagmites in here, but most are damaged or even knocked over and half submerged in what was probably once maybe knee-deep water. Uh, the desiccated corpse of a very large creature uh, looks like almost like a maggot, but it's got legs and tentacles and teeth and stuff. Uh, rests upon the top of a rubble pile uh, above the old water line. There are well, also a significant number of bones. I don't think that's uh, what a kraken looks like, but I can't say it looks um, like it'd be much fun to be around, you know? I agree. I think perhaps it's dead. Maybe. I certainly hope so. I mean... Yeah, if it's not dead, it's probably undead. Which we have it, run into before, earlier. It does when not just before. look dead. It looks like it's been turned into jerky by the brine. Okay, so... Well, I hope not that's not undead. Uh, I'm gonna go poke it with my long sword. Of course you have, not. You have successfully poked the dead thing. All right, it's dead. Look, better to go up and poke it then have it try and launch itself at us while we're leaving, yeah? This is a mm, fair point. That's a good point. Vex has flown off of Gorga's shoulders and is currently gnawing on one of the old bones. Oh, uh, hey, don't eat that. You don't know where it's been. I mean, it's been here, but you don't know what it came from and what's been touching it. Meanwhile, Gen E has also picked up one of the skulls that's lying in here. Hmm. As long as they don't put it in their mouth, I'm not too concerned with that. I'm trying to imagine a situation that would require Gen E to put a skull in their mouth, and I'm not picturing one. No. And I think we are all better off for that. <laughs> yeah, probably. What does the skull look like? Well, you can go and take an investigation check at it if you wish. Yeah, I'll do that. Vex, by the way, when Ryan says you don't know where that's been, well, it's been here. Vex gives a very self-satisfied chirp in Ryan's direction and then goes back to chewing on it. <laughs> oh, come on. Hey, Vex, if we, get, we hand you back to uh, your friend with the, well, with a stomach ache from putting who knows what in your mouth. I've rolled a nine for investigation. It looks like a humanoid skull. Hmm. Maybe last adventurers came through. This is what it's like. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could hold it up in front of you and say, alas, poor York. <laughs> I knew him, Horatio. <laughs> I was kind and, of wondering if that's what Jenny was currently doing. No, they're just turning it upside down and looking at it. It's missing a jaw, and there's a significant portion of damage to the back of the head. But other than that, it's mostly intact. Looks like it even has all of its teeth, hmm. including the pointy ones. Oh, okay, so maybe not a human. Well, we were told this place was run by vampires. So before. could be could be vampire, but do vampires leave skeletons? I haven't the slightest idea. If 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 they are not killed by sunlight, they can. Poor thing. Not much we can do for it though, so Also is vampire, I mean do we want to do something for it? They didn't sound like they were too bad of folks. Yeah, I mean, they ran the mine and used the profits to pay for their blood. Right, but I don't know. If we help this one in some way, I think we are the only supply of blood here right now. That's true. And what if it's hungry? Smoot point. Nothing we can do. You, you, you do realize you are talking about a skull. Yes, exactly. I don't know enough about vampires to know if they can use that. To... I, am not mu I was not much of an adventurer in my past life. Yeah, Ne yeah, ne that's ne right. Neither was I. We have things in common, then. Are you also an exile? Actually, in some ways, yes. My uh, my parents are wonderful people, but my mother's family um, basically disowned her after she uh, got involved with a thief. They did not approve. Her family and my mother is human. And they cut her off completely after. So, yes, I am an exile. I, 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 I am sorry to hear that. Meanwhile, totally different mood. Vex has decided to start tossing the bone that they were chewing on the ground, and then it moved, so therefore they pounce on it and bat it around, then chew on it again, then toss it. It'd be adorable if it wasn't uh, vampire bones that it was chewing on. 
come on, but that belonged to somebody once. It chirps at you again, as if to say, well, yes, and now it belongs to me. This thing really is a cat. <sighs> I might be in part basing Vex off of my own cat, yes. <laughs> It flies up onto Ryan's head and perches. All right. Uh, good enough. And curls up. Swish. You, now ha- you now have a pseudo-dragon hat. <laughs> right. Probably should be uh, heading out of here. It will provide plus one to your AC, and you have to make all <laughs> dexterity saves at disadvantage or fear dislodging the purring pseudo-dragon on your head. Fair enough, but I got a dex of nine, so... Uh... <laughs> so, so we're not going to have a lot of luck with dexterity saves. <laughs> Mental note, dexterity saves, okay. increase by... Uh, by the way, Ryan, uh, because of Vex's position, go ahead and... What's your passive perception? Fourteen. Okay. Uh, you're close enough to this bone, perhaps closer than you really want to be. Uh, it's just bones. Uh, yes, but this bone has writing on it. Another one with writing. Uh, I mean, the writing is... Hmm? The writing has been chewed up a bit. Uh, can you read this? I will try to read this around the teeth marks from the little dragon. Uh, let's see what it says. Did tell them not to chew it. Well, you know. Is it a dragon? Do they listen? I don't think so. Uh, okay. So, is it in a language I can read? Do I need to do an the, investigation or something for that? This bone is... You can see enough letters to believe that it's also infernal okay. but Vex has done their best to scribble all over it with their tooth marks. Okay, so this bone written in the same language as the previous one with the finger bone and uh, it's hard to say what this one was writing about. A lot of the words have been scratched recently. Uh, can, can, can you read this then? And Jen E hands you the skull. Oh. Interesting. There's Why is writing. someone storing information on bones? This is May- just well, weird. I'm, if you were stuck down here, I suppose it would last longer than paper with all the water. And in this I, case, the outside of the skull does not have any writing on it. It's inside the brain case that you see the writing. Interesting. All right. Can I read this as well? Uh, yes. Okay. It appears to be the end of the story, which is why the writing didn't need to extend to the outside of the skull as well as the inside. But apparently, the previous owner of the skull was one of many individuals in town that was getting sick. Uh, does it say more about what made them? They didn't know. Uh, okay. Is that all I get from that? Vampirism. Well, it's, it's written in the first person. And they're talking about getting sick and dying. And then the story ends. And it's written inside their skull. Okay, this is a bit strange, but the story inside of the skull appears to be written by the owner of the skull. It is on inside. I don't know. In any case, the person who wrote the story is uh, noticing that they are getting sick, but it does not have further details about why it's not so or what kind of... That's all it says. Insert the Monty Python quote here. Perhaps he was dictating. Well, so this we is all we have three very... pieces of We have three pieces of someone's journal, and now it turns out the person writing the journal did not make it, but somehow wrote... Or turned into a vampire. Could be. I don't know if I want to be carrying around bits and pieces of a vampire's journal. <laughs> I mean, will they be happy with me for collecting it or not? I'll I take it. Know. Okay, here. I'll give you the finger bone as well that we collected before. I think is from probably same journal. Yeah, I'll okay. hold the weird magic journal. Yeah, I don't I don't think I could put up much of a fight if Vampire got mad at me for reading its journal, you know? I mean, it's their yeah. fault for not leaving the, the little cheap lock closed <laughs> around the brain case. But yeah, you have to take a generic good. key or any sharp object and jab it in there and turn it. Paperclip. We I should... mean, it's really fancy. <laughs> You know what? Let's probably start heading back. I keep forgetting that, well, not everyone here's been doing this sort of thing. No, not at all. I was not a fighter. I am a weaver. I, I, I could use a long rest. Ah, I believe this. You've been hanging on a cliff for a while, or a wall, or 
It was not and very restful. Understandable. And guess I should figure out if certain people have any advice for me. You know, that kind of makes me wonder. Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry if this is a rude question, but do, do you get one too, but for the other side? Ryan is looking at Morley as they ask this. Um, well, sometimes, yes, but uh, not since I have uh, returned. So... Granted, none of you have taken a nap since you returned. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is true. Uh, but I, I think the answer to your question is yes, but mm, not lately. Mm. But I can let you know if I get uh, someone telling me things from the others. We can swap weird guide stories. Sure, why not? You might end up having a breakthrough from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a horrible person. And I'm also a DM, but I repeat myself. Okay, your trip back is uneventful, except for going through the Mephit room. The Mephits are still there. You realize, as you're going through, that they are perhaps disappointed when they see you return. <laughs> and they were kind of disappointed the last time you went through this room, after dealing with the rats. Like, oh, no... They're still here. <laughs> uh, one of them said, might need to herd more rats. Uh, but other than that, you're able to make your way back to the inn or the tavern. Uh, you do find a plaque when you return that does say it is the Penne Pincher Inn. And there's a portrait of somebody who is referred to as the proprietor. Their name is Parm E. Jean. You all take one point of psychic damage. Ugh, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's still better than the first time I told you that. Threatened how to burn is, the entire town to the ground. How is the structure of this in this tavern? Is the ground floor, like, there are aftermarket windows, some of them in the ceiling. But the ground floor seems relatively intact, so far as load-bearing abilities. And there are enough rooms that are intact that you can each lie down for the night without having to have a roommate. Okay, good. Because I died in a tavern from it being from it falling apart. I do not wish to have this happen again. You could pick the Raven Room. That has a big opening, so nothing's there to fall on you anymore. I think it would be hard to sleep with lots of birds around. I would absolutely prefer the Raven Room if possible. Well, there you go. I mean, there is precipitation, so you don't need to worry about the large amount of bird poop. <laughs> <laughs> it might take three or four applications of prestidigitation, but there you go. It's a cantrip, it's free. It's free. It's true. And and that is where we're going to end it. This is our last session with level one players, because during the night, rocks fall, you all die. No, not true. (laughs) Not true. (laughs) Nope, you're going up to level two, so I can throw bigger things at you. I mean, hi. (laughs) So thank you everyone for playing. Thank you everyone for listening. We got to a late start, and we still didn't record for a full two hours but you know whatever let's do a few quick plugs so chris does a fortnightly recorded podcast azerothctc.com it is not just about world of warcraft they talk about other things as well like hearthstone and even non-blizzard products matter of fact you barely mentioned overwatch today when you were recording i don't think we did i think we mentioned it like we're all just kind of waiting for overwatch too but that's about it you, you mentioned to say you weren't going to talk about it. But that's recorded every other week, and you can find that on AzerothCTC.com. Ellie runs a whole social network, elek.xyz, E-L-E-K-K dot X-Y-Z. Also, not just about World of Warcraft, even though it's named after a creature in World of Warcraft, there is a lot of talk about a wide variety of games, including a significant amount of Final Fantasy XIV currently. But there's other things there as well, and that runs on Mastodon, so if you have an activity pub, compatible account you can follow us our social details are on the cast page which is linked in the show notes and on the screen right now if you're watching the stream live eo's mom writes books you can find those at elizabeth-mccoy.com and i almost gave bookofgen.net by mistake because that is (laughs) jen's website (laughs) jen is the next person i'm talking about that's where you can find jen's blog and podcast and podcast not just with audio but there are videos there as well including a hardcore barbarian run through diablo 3 yep cindy is still awesome 
doesn't have something for us to plug currently, but don't want her to feel left out. And you can find all my stuff, including the website that hosts all of these podcasts that are edited down to get rid of a lot of the extra stuff and half of the ums that I do at AaronBSmith.com. We also have a Patreon that is not at AaronBSmith.com, but that is Patreon.com slash Cogwheel. You can join other illustrious patrons, including Chris, Ellie, Eric, and Mickey, who help keep the lights on because this is a hobby for me, and therefore I am trying to fill that bottomless pit with money. And as a teacher, I don't have a significant amount of money to pour into that. But it's bottomless pit, so it doesn't matter. All right, so until next time, this is Crash saying, you still didn't do a full clear. (laughs) Good night, everybody. Good night.